Hey everyone, we are back finally with another podcast for You Matter. I am, of course, here along with Brenna once Hello. again. Yes, it's me, as always. Yes. Are you sick of me yet? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are back here. I know it's been just a crazy busy month for everyone here. We had a lot of events going on within our organization and yeah. the impending doom of finals are here officially. It's here, yeah. So. It's yeah, so it's been a crazy stressful time, but I'm yeah. happy we're able to figure out this little time right here on this Sunday yeah. afternoon. Yeah, I mean, you know, brought the janky camera, brought no memory card almost, but then I dug one out of my backpack that almost didn't work, but um, we got it rolling. So. Yeah, we're, we're good to go. It's a beautiful so, day out here. So yeah, it's gorgeous. It's not 100 degrees yet, so yet. Yeah. we're Taking enjoying it while we can. Soaking it up, so... <laughs> So, uh, for today's podcast, we just really want to talk about, we know this is like a mental health podcast, but we really just want to talk about the importance of mental health, because there have been just like a few events going on in the world and everything that we feel like this conversation really just needs to continue and to keep happening Mm -hmm. along. So, um, it's going to be a little somber tone today, but it's something that needs to be talked about. It's not something that can be shied away from, so we're just going to roll with it. Yeah. So... Obviously, like, our organization is centered around the importance of mental health. Our main objective is to spread awareness and to, like, make people realize that it's always important. And um, something that we wanted to talk about today, kind of center our topic around, our focus is um, the death of Avicii. And he's a, what, where is he from? Swedish. DJ. Yeah. Swedish DJ. Um, um, very popular among the EDM scene. Had definitely a uh, decent amount of mainstream hits. His real name is Tim Bergling uh, from Sweden. Uh, some of his hits you may know, Wake Me Up and Hey Brother are probably his yeah. top two. And it was about a month ago, maybe a little bit less, where uh, he died. And it was determined that his death was the result of a suicide, unfortunately. Yeah. And he was only 28 years old. Yeah, very talented, very popular, and um, that just kind of goes to show that you can, you know, you can have it all. He literally had it all, and um, that doesn't mean that your mental health is going to be perfect. And um, there's nothing that discriminates. So, like, mental health doesn't discriminate. You know, he was so successful. Yeah. And But that didn't, you know, determine... Uh, that didn't stop him from having depression or didn't stop him from having those suicidal thoughts and going through with it actually which is really sad and um yeah uh his family had early statements after his death saying that like he definitely had a lot of alcohol problems abuse of that yeah and um recently there was a a documentary just uh before it and before everything happened and a lot of it was Ibishi just talking about like his life and how he wants to try and find a balance between you know making music and touring and Mm -hmm. having like a normal life and um he he was just overworked completely over it and I think it played a huge part in it and a quote from the documentary that I want to bring up is he said I have told them this, I won't be able to play anymore. I have said, like, I'm going to die, I have said it so many times, and so I don't want to hear that I should entertain the thought of doing another gig. Yeah, so, so and like this, obviously very tired, yeah. very tired. And this, this was like a public statement, made yeah. full on documentary, people could see, and I feel like this was something that no one had brought up or talked about, the fact that this guy has literally gone on record and saying yeah. that he doesn't know how much longer he can not just do music but just to continue on living yeah, in general. Yeah, and that surprises me. I mean, I don't know when that um, statement was made, but uh, the fact that it was such a public statement and nobody really took it to be alarming. Yeah. I mean, that is alarming. It's. I mean, obviously, <laughs> we are trained to look out for those things Yeah. in our internship and just our knowledge of mental health. We are a little more sensitive to that stuff than most, but um, just the fact that, you know, it, it, it was shocked everybody and with a statement like that honestly people should have been more proactive yeah. in protecting him like th- there should have been a, a huge portion of people saying like yeah. take two three five years off from like exactly your thing and just get better I mean, and do what you need to do yeah I, I feel like with celebrities there's such like a platform and like a pedestal that they are held to exactly. that they're supposed to be like these 
perfect entertainers who have yeah. like their entire life figured out and they have all this money so they shouldn't be depressed or sad but like mental health yeah. is something that affects every individual in one way or another yeah and you know it, it is crazy because I think it might even be harder for celebrities to be mentally ill I would argue because yeah. they have so like you said they have so much pressure and they have the stigma that because they have the money and the fame and the wealth and the fortune and the fans. you know everything they yeah. have the fans they have all these people praising them that they shouldn't be depressed and yeah. that's just not that's just so invalid like it just makes me mad yeah cuz in the end like we're all humans we're all yeah. like individuals going through the same things yeah. and no one person should be seen as like that perfect individual yeah. that can like do all this stuff and not have problems of their own i agree i totally agree and um it just kind of it puts it, into perspective a little bit yeah and it i mean i actually saw this tweet about it that said you know what's it going to take for everybody to start caring about mental health because somebody you know there's been like a decent amount of suicides lately and so it's like if one person dies from suicide we all care for a month and then we forget and then we stop yeah. treating mental health the and it's tweets like, will go on for yeah. about a week yeah and then, and then it's just back to normal it's as if it never happened it is as if it never happened which is why we're specifically taking this podcast even though like uh avc's death is about a month out because yeah. we're here and this is still a topic that needs to be talked about yeah so we wanted to come out here today and still continue on that conversation and not yeah. act like that it just didn't happen exactly and um i think that you know i actually responded to the tweet because i was so um affected by it because i totally totally supported what this person had to say about us just you know not caring until something happens well you know the whole thing is prevention it's it's caring before something happens yeah and that is just so important and i mean i think that people it doesn't you don't have to talk about mental health every day you don't have to talk about suicide prevention every day but you need to be doing thing mental health is like a constant upkeep it's you know you can't just shove it under the rug and then when something really bad happens bring it back up and act like oh it's this big thing for a month and then shove it back under yeah. your rug again. It's, it's like working out a muscle you have yeah. to continue to work it out totally. for it to get better and improve yeah, you can't yeah, yeah. just yeah. Just let it sit. Yeah, that's a good analogy, and it's so true because it's something that can slip very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, staying on top of that and spreading that awareness and making it a more um, a more accepted topic is what we're trying to do. That's what we yeah. try to do, yeah. and that's just important so that we don't have things like this happen, or that when they do, you know, we get genuine care from people and we get genuine interest in trying to stop that from happening again so yeah yeah and so we hope that we can just continue on with that mm -hmm. as much as we can and um continuing on the somber tone i apologize but it needs to be talked about uh this is an older uh suicide with i think maybe a, a year ago uh chester bennington uh for those of you who don't know the lead singer of lincoln park which yeah. i feel like our generation definitely grew up with a lot Definitely. of Linkin Park songs in the end, yeah, What I've very, Done, yeah. Numb, Bleed It Out, Influential, and so, yeah. yeah, and he was the lead singer, and, you know, he had a family, he had kids, he had a wife, and his suicide was just completely out of nowhere, but in the end, it's never just out of nowhere. Exactly. It, it that's what it appears to be on the outside, but, um... Yeah, it's a mental health it's like it's a silent killer it is and it makes us all so sad when we hear that you know something has happened and we think that it was sudden but it's not this is years of accumulation this is you know years of trying to suppress that feeling and you know the desire to follow through with that mm -hmm. and um it's just sad because again you know he's a celebrity he had everything he wanted he had a family mm -hmm. like he had he made his dream come true and it's still you know he was still depressed and that's that's okay because we don't discriminate against anybody and we don't make anyone feel like they shouldn't be depressed because that's just invalid like it's just not right to say that no one can be depressed because of their life situation and their circumstances but um i mean it's important that we just recognize how much mental health doesn't discriminate like literally this can happen to anybody yeah and with chester um 
his wife, uh, after his suicide and everything, she was going on tweeting all these things. Like, there was a video of Chester, like, 48 hours before his suicide, where he's laughing and smiling yeah. with his, like, kids, and they're, like, playing the game and having a good time. And uh, it was released that, like, three days before, he was singing, like, carpool karaoke with, like, comedian uh, Ken Jung, I believe, from The Hangover. Yeah movies that he was singing carpool karaoke like in there and he was having a great time and like the fact that these yeah. events took place just hours before yeah. like it really shows how silent of a killer yeah, yeah. that this can be and For how sure. like you don't really know what a lot of people are like going through until it's too late yeah yeah i um it's we think that if somebody is smiling or laughing or enjoying you know, a part of their day that they aren't in a really bad place. Yeah. And that's what we assume, but that's not true. Yeah. That's not true. I feel like the whole story of, like, everyone's got something behind the curtain. Yeah. It, like, it just brings so much truth. Yeah. And we, we know, like, it's not easy to just see it, you know. Like, when we see someone, we're going to automatically assume if they're smiling that they're happy. Yeah. And, you know, th there's a lot of people who can, you know, hide that fact. And yeah. it's just about getting them to understand that, like, it's okay to not be okay that like you may be feeling this and you feel like you have to put on this show for yeah. everyone but like you are valid valued and important and okay so we just wanted to say sorry for any um choppy cuts or editing or anything like that we were having a lot of difficulties with the camera it was just stopping our recordings and then i think the battery died and my card kept filling up so we've switched over to phone um, but that is that. So, moving on with our final topic. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Technical difficulties, but that is not going to stop us talking about <laughs> mental health. <laughs> we're, we're dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we talked about, uh, to go to somber tone, just switching that up. But, uh, so we talked about Swedish DJ Avicii and his suicide. We talked about Chester Bennington, lead singer of Lincoln Park and his suicide. And the last one I wanted to bring up, uh, which was the one that I really felt like really affected me the most when it happened. And this is like an older one. I think we were in high school uh, when this happened, but Robin Williams, of course, and anyone who doesn't know who Robin Williams in, is just kind of has lived under a rock for the last <laughs> 40 years. But, um, you know, he was the voice of the genie in Aladdin. He was in Flubber, he was in Hook and Dead Poet Society. And like, I can go on and on about him yeah. but, but the type of person he was he uh he was the type of person who would come into a room and would just be the funniest person in the room he would always make sure that everyone around him was laughing and just having a good time and i think that says a lot and a testament to like his character and when his suicide happened it really just kind of struck a chord uh at least with myself because i feel like that is something i completely have understood on like yeah how he was as a person and always being that charismatic one but then really you know on the inside you know he was battling like really bad depression and drugs i think too played like a part of it and it was like one that went on for years for him yeah and he yeah. eventually came to like the end of his battle which was such a shame for that but i feel like that is just something like mental health is where like it's the funniest person you've ever met and yet they're the saddest ones that you can yeah. meet as well yeah i think a lot of times it's actually studies have been done on that where um people that are very creative and have a lot of creative energy are actually more likely to be depressed and vice versa i mean when if people that you know are mentally ill are more likely to just have this um creativity about them and be able to create a lot of things and a lot of them are humorous too a lot of them use humor to um kind of cope with yeah. what they're dealing with i, I feel like humor is like the number one like yeah. defense mechanism yeah totally it totally is and it covers up a lot and people think that funny people are the happiest but a lot of times they are the saddest which is very ironic but it's very sad um, yeah. and i feel like and a big reason why like those funny people usually sometimes not usually but can be like depressed a big amount of the time is because and even though they're the ones making everyone laugh in the room i feel like it's they want everyone to be having a good time because they don't want the people to around them to be experiencing the things that they are going through because they know how lonely and how dark it is being on a path of such depression and they feel yeah. like that isn't something anyone should have to go through so they want to be sure that everyone's having a good time so they don't have to feel the type of things that they are feeling 
for sure yeah and um and i mean that's so it just makes you even more sad once you hear you know that this person like this funny person is depressed because they do try so hard to entertain everybody else and he was really good at mm -hmm. it so 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 talented my personal favorite is miss doubtfire <laughs> classic <laughs> love that yeah, movie classic. <laughs> so yeah so and that's a good one to bring up because um all these people you know that we talked about today are so talented in their own ways so successful in the limelight very popular but um again it just doesn't mean that they had everything together on the inside so yeah so we wanted to talk about these things even though it can be very somber but it's just getting an awareness out there with like mental health and we know like the signs aren't always clear cut like yeah. we both can know people who are going through it and we yeah. don't know it and we're not saying you should be able to know the signs because the signs are hard to see even for like people who are experts in the field it yeah. can be like difficult but we hope that with these messages that we put out there that like it's okay to not be okay and you know we encourage to seek help um, when you need it go and find it out like you are valued exactly. and important and you deserve to be here just yeah. as much as anyone else you deserve to be here and you deserve to enjoy the life that you have you know you deserve to be happy and a lot of times depression and can you know wear on your self-esteem and then you feel like you aren't worthy of being happy or having a positive life but each and every one of us is so it is important even though it's hard to take that step and get the help and you know speak out because if you bottle this stuff up you know it can lead to some pretty bad, bad places yeah Got anything else? Nope. I think we've wrapped it up for today. Uh, nice, nice. Um, sorry for all the technical difficulties. You know, uh, it might be some choppy editing throughout it. We apologize, but we made best with what we had. Yes. Unfortunate, but... Made it work. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. As we always do. But, um, yeah, so uh, we know finals are coming up, and then, of course, summer. So I guess we won't know exactly when we'll be back, but... At least when the semester, next semester starts in the fall, we'll definitely be looking to pick it up. Maybe we'll have some over the summer if all of our past will line up for it. Yeah. But who knows? Uh, if not, you know, have a great summer. Um, yeah. And we hope to be back as soon as we can. Yeah, and good luck on finals, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Take care.